are some of my favorite photos that I've taken because they suspend reality. They have a dreamy vibe that's not like something you would see with your own eyes. And they do that by using a long shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time it takes for your camera's shutter to open and then close again while taking a photo. So it consequently is the amount of motion captured in that photo. Usually for photography, you're gonna use a really fast shutter speed, like, you know, a 400th or even like a thousandth of a second to really freeze one moment in time and have as little motion blur as possible. But if we slow that shutter speed down and try maybe a quarter of a second, five seconds, or maybe even something crazy like 60 seconds, you can create some really interesting effects by using that motion blur to your advantage. So today I wanna to show you seven different creative effects that you can create using a slow shutter speed. The first one is the simplest, and that's just to shoot something that moves quickly, like a moving car or someone on a bicycle. Using this with a slow shutter speed will just blend that motion out a little bit more and it helps to portray the motion of that subject. Using this technique can also allow you to shift the focus of the frame from that blurred out subject to another subject that you want to dominate the photograph. So for example, in this photo, the slow shutter speed not only shows the motion of the moving car, but shifts the focus of the photo onto this little in in the background. Since you're gonna be shooting a pretty fast moving subject for this one and probably shooting handheld, you're not gonna to wanna to slow your shutter speed down too much, like maybe a quarter second or an eighth of a second. Next, let's take that exact same photo, but add an additional element where we're gonna move the camera to follow that subject as we're taking the photo. This creates this really interesting effect where the background completely blurs out, but the subject is completely in focus. For this effect, I still wouldn't go below like a quarter of a second because it's really tough to nail the movement on this one. This is something where you're definitely gonna need to stay at that crosswalk and try it 10, maybe 20 times to get one that's tack sharp. I've taken a ton of these in New York City to show not only the busyness and fast pace of New York, but to show the different modes of transportation that people use to get around the streets of New York City. And it creates this really trippy effect where you're really isolating that subject from its background while still implying its motion. One of my favorite photography techniques in the book. Next, instead of standing back and taking a photo of a moving subject, let's take a photo while we're on that subject, like a car or in this case, an escalator. Because the camera is locked onto a moving subject, you're gonna really blur out the background and imply its motion, which is a really cool effect that can once again really simplify that background and draw the eye to the subject of the photo while still implying very fast motion. Now, those effects can be created handheld. It might take a few tries, but you can definitely do it. But for the next ones, you're definitely gonna need to lock your camera off using a tripod. And that's why I wanna briefly talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Polar Pro. They were kind enough to sponsor this video and send over a few new products, including this little guy that just launched today. This is the Apex Minimalist Tripod. A tripod is an essential tool for most long exposure effects because it enables you to eliminate that handheld motion blur that you would get from just holding the camera. The small and lightweight form factor is perfect for the longer hikes and backpacking trips that I've been getting into lately, but it's also great at supporting even very heavy camera setups. Each leg has one of these little tooth locks, which allows you to set the tripod up on very uneven terrain, and also to be completely sure that your camera is not going anywhere. This locking mechanism is really, really strong. The legs, along with the ball head, give you a full range of motion to set your camera up on any terrain and point it in any direction, which is a level of flexibility that I haven't seen from a miniature tripod like this before. It's great for getting a low angle and adding some foreground and depth into your static shots and also for vlogging. It's super easy to just hold this out and use it as a handle to shoot a vlog. It's also great for really quickly and easily setting up a nice simple shot at my desk like this one. In addition to the tripod, Polar Pro also sent over a couple of other new products that launched today, including this belay camera strap and this Traverse 
camera strap mount. This is gear you've seen before with tweaks to make it work more reliably and make it easier to use. So for example, the strap has a nice quick release and also just fits a lot more ergonomically than other camera straps because of the fact that it attaches to the bottom of the camera rather than the top. And this strap mounted quick release is also really useful for hiking because it gets tiring having to stop every five seconds and unpack my camera from my bag, shoot, and then put it back. So instead just having it attached to the strap on my backpack and having this nice one handy quick release to just twist it off and click it back in is really nice and easy to use for hiking. It also grips really, really tightly onto the strap but can also be removed and moved to another backpack really quickly and easily. There will be a link to where you can check out all of this gear below. And now that we've got a tripod, it's time to talk about our next long exposure effect, which is the infamous long exposure flowy water technique. For this, just set your camera up on a tripod shooting something with moving water like a waterfall or a river and then use an exposure around the range of maybe like between three and 20 seconds depending on how much you wanna smooth that water out. I usually aim for about four or five seconds. This effect not only looks very dreamy and cool but allows you to cut out all of those splashes in the water so you can simplify the frame and see exactly how the water's flowing and the landscape around it. You can take that exact same technique of setting up your tripod and shooting a moving subject for several seconds to create this light trail effect. Now you can take like a flashlight and paint designs in your photos, which is kind of quirky and fun. But what I prefer to do is shoot headlights and get these really cool light streak effects from traffic. This creates a really cool futuristic vibe and once again eliminates those moving distractions in the photo to allow you to focus on the frame and the city around it. While we're on the subject of eliminating distractions, you can use a long exposure to do just that if you're in a crowded space. Well, it's 2020, so I really hope you're not in a crowded space, but in the future, this is a technique to have in the back of your mind. If you're in a busy area where there's a lot of crowds of people blocking your photo, what you can try doing is setting up your tripod and exposing for as long as possible, like literally 60 seconds. And all of those people, assuming they're moving, are going to blur out and practically disappear. Anyone who's standing still for most of the time you expose that photo is still gonna show up in the frame. But assuming most of those people are moving, this is gonna dramatically improve the crowds blocking your photo by cutting out the vast majority of those people. This is another technique that I used a lot in New York City. And finally, let's keep that 60 second shutter and instead of using it to cut down a crowd, let's use it to photograph the night sky. This technique doesn't show motion, but it's still gonna require a tripod and a really, really long ass shutter, like 60 seconds most of the time. To get the best result, make sure you're pointing your camera at the brightest part of the sky, the Milky Way. And I usually find that by using an app called PhotoPills, which uses augmented reality to show you exactly where that big chunk of stars that's brightest in the sky is at any given time and day. Even those brightest stars are really, really dim and don't show up on camera most of the time, but with a 60 second exposure, you can really capture that light and bring out detail in the stars. And then once you go in Lightroom and brighten it up in post, you get a really surreal vibe. This technique, once again, is another one of my favorite effects to use in all of photography and it creates really amazing photos almost all the time. But that's the last effect I have to show you in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something new from it, and I encourage you to go out and try these for yourself. And if you get a cool photo that's gram worthy and you decide to post it, please tag me in it. I love seeing you guys using these techniques in your own work. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to show your support by leaving a like, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the